Hi everybody, welcome to Living Traditions Homestead. My name is Sarah. Well, you know I love to teach you guys things and I love to can. I love to teach you how to can. But there's one thing that I have canned in the past that I recently realized that I'll never be able to teach you and that is how to can citrus juice. We don't have citrus trees here in Southwest Missouri in the Missouri Ozarks. We had a lot of them though in our urban homestead when we lived in the Phoenix, Arizona area. I was going through some old videos that I did while we still lived there. We were thinking about doing YouTube at that time and I filmed this video teaching how to can citrus juice. So I thought it would be fun to give you a glimpse of our urban homestead in the Phoenix, Arizona area while still teaching you something. You're gonna see my old kitchen, which I actually miss. I loved that kitchen. And you'll be able to see what I looked like four years ago. It's a great video. I'm excited to share it with you. I was teaching already then. So I hope that you are excited to learn how to can orange juice because I love it and I would do it all over again if I had the opportunity. Here we go. Uh, today we're going to be canning citrus juice. Um, on our farm, Arizona Hobby Farm, we have nine citrus trees. Um, they are tangerine and orange. Um, out of the nine, we juice seven of them. One of them we keep for just eating. Uh, one of them is inedible but provides really great shade to our animals in the summer. Um, because we have so many citrus trees, uh, and we have a lot of juice, juicing to do and a lot of juice to take care of. Uh, the method that we use is we pick the oranges from and tangerines from an entire tree and then we have a big juicing session uh, which allows me then the next day to have a big canning session. So that's where we're at uh, the last two evenings. After work, Kevin has picked uh, the oranges from an entire tree. Uh, then last night, as a family, we sat down and we juiced all of the oranges. Uh, we put them in these buckets um, and kept them outside covered overnight uh, to keep cool. Just a tip, we get these buckets for free uh, from the Walmart bakery. Uh, they're food grade, uh, they're really nice, they come with covers. Um, anyway, so this morning, now that the kids are at school and the animals have been fed, now it's time for me to get canning. And I just wanted uh, to give you guys an opportunity to see how we do it here. So I brought the, uh, the buckets of orange juice into the house and I'm going to be transferring them into these big pots so that uh, we can heat them up on the stove. Essentially what we're going to be doing is pasteurizing the citrus juice. We're going to bring it up to 190 degrees. We're going to then lower the heat and keep it at 190 degrees for five minutes before we start canning. Um, you will need um, either one pot. I've got so much I'm going to be using two pots today. You need a thermometer to keep watch of the temperature. The first thing I'm going to do um, is I'm going to grab a spoon and uh, the pulp of the citrus juice has settled to the bottom and that's really not that big of a deal. Uh, but I just want to distribute that um, evenly and um, before I start pouring it in. Now we're going to see how skilled I am at pouring so that I don't spill it everywhere. Ready? my first canner. Um, I've got my, I'm going to be using uh, two canning pots. One of them is considerably bigger. It will hold eight quarts. Um, but because I have so much juice to can, I'm also going to have a second, a smaller one on there, which will hold, I think, five quarts. Um, but while this is heating up, I'm going to get my big canner also heated up and I'm going to bring it to a boil and then I'm going to turn it off so that when I am ready to put some jars in there, it's already hot, it's not, it's not boiling, but it's already hot enough so that it'll come to a boil pretty quickly when I need it to, okay? So, onto the stove with these. I 
And I'm just going to watch this um, every so often and stir it and, and um, get it heated up to 190 degrees. Then I'm going to turn the temperature down to low, as low as it'll go to like simmer if you have that on your, um, on your stove. I have low on my gas stove and I'm going to keep it there for five minutes. And um, in the meantime, now I'm going to get my jars ready. I'm going to make sure that they're hot. You're going to be canning these into hot jars. Uh, the way that I do that and keep them hot is uh, I start with sterilized jars. We're going to be using quart-sized jars today. And I turn my, my faucet um, water on hot, as hot as it will go. And just before I start canning, I fill them all, all the way up to the top with super-duper hot water. Um, and then right before I start putting juice in them, then I, I dump out the hot water so that that's how I keep my, um, my jars hot. That's just how it works well for me. So uh, I'm going to go get ready to start canning and uh, when everything is um, up to temperature and has been there for five minutes, I'll come back and we'll move on to the next step, okay? I just want to go over with you some of the um, equipment that we're going to need. Uh, you're going to need jars, uh, quart jars. I have, I'm expecting uh, to use 19 or 20 of them today, so I have them all here. Um, and uh, we've got our rings, I've uh, uh, got as many as I need there. And in this pot, I have um, the lids, the brand new lids that we'll be using on uh, the quartz. I've got a few more to go in there. I already have hot water in there. Uh, once I have a little bit more room on the stove, I'm going to put those on the stove and heat them uh, to very hot but not boiling. Uh, today, we're also going to be using a jar lifter. We're going to be using uh, one of these tools that tells you how much space uh, how much head space is in each jar. We're going to be uh, using this and canning these to a quarter inch head space today. Uh, we're going to use a tool with a magnetic end. I uh, will be using a spoon in case there's overage to spoon it out. And I'm going to be using a stir stick to stir down inside to make sure there are no bubbles. And I'll be using a, a damp paper towel to wipe the lids. Uh, like I told you before, I fill all my uh, jars with hot water to keep them hot, and I just have a couple more to do. I always prepare uh, hot pads, one for my hot um, pot of juice, and I always keep one here for my pot of lids. And I'm going to very carefully bring the pot over so we can get started. I forgot one thing. Can you guess what I forgot? Two things I forgot. I forgot a ladle. A very well used and worn ladle and uh, the jar funnel. Okay, two very important things. So let's get started canning some citrus juice. So I'm taking my hot jar, which I filled with hot water. Pour out the hot water, put in my canning funnel. Now we're going to fill this to a quarter inch of head space. As you do this, you're probably not going to use your little tool that measures. I'm going to today uh, just to demonstrate for you what to do, uh, but really I feel like I, after all this time, have an eye for how much space is there. When I first started canning, I was so nervous about everything and I was so nervous to screw up or to get the measurements not exact, but I feel like I'm a little bit more relaxed about that now. Not that safety isn't important, it is, I just feel like I know what I'm doing more. Okay, so this one is uh, pretty much full. I might have to add a little bit more. I'm going to dump this one and get it ready right away. And start on another one. I'm going to need my lid soon, so I'm going to put this on the oven and turn it on high. While I'm waiting, I'm just going to keep filling some jars. This one needs a little bit more. It's foamy on top, and that's okay. When we uh, measure, with our tool, we're not going to take the foam into consideration because uh, it's just going to go away pretty soon. Get 
my next one ready. Done about the water. So I've got a nice hot jar to start with. Now the reason you're starting with hot jars is because if your jar glass is cold and you're putting something nearly boiling inside of it, uh, it's so much shock to the glass that it can crack the glass of your, um, your jar. Now, when I was uh, just starting this, I really thought it was uh, just, you know, a hoax. Um, I didn't heat my jars. And one time uh, when I was canning, I think jelly, which is super, super hot, I cracked a jar. It didn't break all over the place, fortunately. So um, when I think that I had the right amount of space, I just put in my stir stick to make sure, insert around to make sure there was no uh, uh, air bubbles inside there. I'm going to take my little measuring tool and on mine um, it actually is written in there uh, what level is a quarter inch. But you can kind of figure that out too. So stick it down in there and make sure that um, it's touching your juice. This one needs a tiny bit more. Um, so I'm just going to add a tiny bit more. It's actually a little bit better to have a little bit, a tiny bit more space than called for than less space. Um, when these heat up in your canner, uh, the inside liquid is going to heat up and if um, you boil it a little bit too hot or a little bit too long, uh, some of it can spill out. So that's why we're making sure there's headspace and if there's less headspace than necessary, then if there's more likely that uh, some of the liquid might boil out and that will compromise your um, your nice clean seal with your lid, okay? So that one is fine. So then I took my damp towel, paper towel, and I just wiped the, the lid to make sure that it's clean. Now sometimes when I do canning, I use a damp towel that's been um, dipped in vinegar, but because we are canning something that is an acid base, I don't feel necessary to do that. It wouldn't hurt. Uh, but the, the vinegar is very good for when you're canning something that might be a little bit greasy when you're doing a pressure canning system. Okay, so those are set. Let me see where my lids are at. Not quite ready, so in the meantime, I'm just going to fill a couple more jars. So it's not necessary to boil these. There's been um, kind of controversy or, or, you know, talk back and forth within the canning community whether you need to boil these. And the last official word uh, from like the ball canning book and that kind of thing is that you don't need to boil it, you just need to make sure that they're hot. Okay? All right, so I have four of them ready for lids. I'm going to use my uh, magnetic tool to pick up one of the lids. Make sure that you only have one. Don't touch it. Put it down on there nicely. Get your sterilized lid. And sometimes it can be tricky. You don't want to line up, so there we go. And you want to tighten it. They say to um, finger tightness or whatever they call it. I just tighten it a little bit. And set it aside. Get my next one. Center it on there well as best you can. Screw the lid on. Careful, these jars are hot, especially if you wait like this and don't put the lids on and everything right away. They can get hot, 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 hot. Okay, all well, eight of my jars are filled, um, so I'm going to start taking them and putting them into the canner. Now, my my water is it's kind of a guesstimate at first how much water you need. Um, if they you ha if you have a little bit too much. And you'll find that out as you're filling your canner. Um, if that's the case, you can just um, remove some of it carefully. Try not to burn yourself. In the end, you need one to two inches of water above the top of your jars. If you end up not having a full canner, I recommend that you put extra jars filled with hot water inside there to stabilize your other jars so that they don't tip over in the canning process. Woo! The 
today I have a full canner and I went a couple of times. Now, my water is about a quarter inch to a half an inch to the top of my canner. So I'm gonna remove, I'm gonna remove some water. And I use just a big huge measuring cup with a handle so I don't burn myself. My canner is kind of shallow, so I need to be careful not to remove too much water. I'm going to use my measurer to see how much water I have up there. I still have a little bit extra that I can get rid of. I'm using um, about an inch of water above my jars just because my canner is so kind of short and while it's boiling, if I don't be careful about that, some of it's going to boil out onto my burner and then, um, then I don't know, I just don't like it boiling all over the place. Okay, so uh, my, uh, my canner is loaded. I'm going to cover it with the lid. I'm turning it on high heat. And I am waiting for it to come back to a boil. Once it comes back to a boil, I'm going to set my timer for 10 minutes. Um, if you would like to lower your heat once it gets to a boil, you can do that so it's not um, boiling so, um, so hard. You can turn it down. I do that because otherwise my canner is going to spill water all over the place. And I can have it still boiling pretty good um, at a medium heat once it comes to a hard boil, but that's up to you guys. Um, after your timer goes off for 10 minutes, then you'll want to keep the heat the way it is, take off the lid, and let it um, stay in there for another five minutes. After that, you can turn your heat off and take out your jars. Um, when you take out your jars, you want to spread out um, a towel on your counter. Uh, the reason you want to do that, you want to put your jars on a towel, um, is so that there's not such a temperature shock between uh, the temperature of your counter and the jars. So that just kind of um, gives a little barrier there. Um, and so I will check back with you um, at the time that I have to take these out. Well, my first round of canning is done and it's time for me to pull them out of the canner. I'm going to grab my lifter and a towel uh, so that when I pull them out and bring them over to the counter, they uh, don't get water all over the floor. While I was waiting for these, I uh, jarred up or uh, filled up five more uh, jars and put them in my second canner. And I also uh, finished up the batch that I had by uh, preparing these jars to go in my the canner that I'm emptying now. Okay, right away, now that I have all of them out, I've got these ready, they need to go back in. I only had uh, enough juice for six more jars. So like I said before, I filled up uh, two empty jars with hot water. And I'm going to put them in there last. and they will add stability to my other jars. Now one thing that I encountered when I was filling the very last jar is I didn't have quite enough juice to fill all the way up to the top. I had about one inch left that didn't have juice in it and um, it's okay to just go ahead and fill the rest up with a little bit of water. Nobody will ever know. But I would say anything more than an inch or two below um, I would just uh, put it in the refrigerator and drink it fresh. Okay, here are my jars filled with hot water. run for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, then take the lid off and wait five more minutes. Then you can take them out. I'll check back with you when I'm all finished.
Okay, that's the last of them. One orange tree provided 19 quarts of orange juice for my family for the rest of the year. Uh, it's quite an accomplishment for that tree and for this family. We're really excited. Um, you know, that's just under five gallons. That's, that's pretty awesome. Now, when you take out your canned goods, just leave them on the counter for about 24 hours. Uh, don't disturb them. You're going to start hearing popping sounds. That's the actual seal setting in. Um, after 24 hours, you can write on the top, label them, or however you choose to label yours, and then um, put them away. Uh, thank you so much for uh, stopping by and, and uh, learning how to can citrus juice. Uh, today I canned orange juice, but using the same method, you could uh, can any citrus juice. We can lemon juice, uh, tangerine juice, orange juice. I'm going to be doing grapefruit juice this year um, and hopefully in the future as we expand our citrus orchard. Uh, we'll also include lime juice, uh, maybe a tangelo. Um, so thank you again. My name is Sarah. And I hope to see you again soon. Come back and learn with us. Thanks. So even four years ago, I loved to teach how to can. And I loved to can. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope the information is useful, especially for those of you who live in Florida, California, Arizona, and maybe other countries like Australia that have access to a lot of citrus. Didn't you love my cabinets back then? That was such a beautiful kitchen. You guys, thank you for spending time with me. I'm so happy that you love to learn from me. I love to teach you. If you are enjoying what you're seeing here on our channel, please subscribe if you haven't already. And also share this information and share our channel with other people who would enjoy what we do. And until next time, thank you so much for stopping by this homestead and our urban homestead in the Phoenix area. Take care and God bless.